All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time I left, across, left off at the Germans crossing the Don on a new offensive. We're now on to British 8th Army strikes back at El Alamein, July 10th, 1942. Battle of Egypt begins. Um, after the fall of Mersa Matur, Rommel continued his advance eastward, uh, and by July 1st, he had reached El Alamein. Uh, only 60 miles from Alexandria. It was here that General uh, Auchinleck decided to make a stand for the country formed a narrow bottleneck. The sea... What? Yeah, the sea guarding his right flank and the Quatara Depression, his left. In the early morning of July 1st, the armored strength of the opposing forces joined battle, and heavy fighting continued throughout the day. The 8th Army repulsed repeated attacks by tanks and infantry, and on the evening of the 2nd, the enemy retired, leaving the British positions intact. On the following day, British forces, with air support on a scale unprecedented in the Middle Eastern Front, counterattacked, captured several hundred prisoners, and put many enemy tanks out of action. This was followed on the 10th, by an enemy attack by British and South African troops with tank and air support who occupied the ridge of Tel El Isa after a five-mile advance. A similar attack was made from the south on the 15th by New Zealand and Indian uh, infantry who succeeded in taking uh, Roycevist Ridge south of El Alamein and advancing into the enemy position seven miles yeah, into the enemy position seven miles. The picture show above left, uh, British tanks setting off at dawn to attack the enemy positions. Making sure they get up there early. Maybe if they can, catching the enemy by surprise from the early morning attack. Um, right, Matilda's followed by men uh, of the Scots Guard. Uh, going into action at El Alamein. You can could, could see the Matildas, um, which aren't really shown off very much. In a lot of World War II documentaries, things like that, they show either the Soviet T-34, that's usually the one, main one they show. They either show the Panzers, um, may that be the Panzer IV, or then the Panthers and the Tigers. Or they'll show the American Sherman, but they don't always show the British tanks, which is weird, because, I mean, yes, the British tanks aren't maybe as popular, but, like, the British invented tanks, so, like, that's the thing I always find interesting. We never talk about British tanks as much, but, like, they invented the tank. Yeah, I know. But the Matildas did good. The lower pictures show Bren carriers. Oh, right here. Uh, oh, it's actually two pictures here. These are both Bren carriers, just from different positions, um, patrolling the forward areas of the battlefield. Yeah, so we see the two Bren gun carriers um, used very often because, I mean, they're good at what they do. German drive threatens Stalingrad and Rostov, July 12th to 19th, 1942, fighting in the Dawn Bend. Although the Germans had reached the very gates of Vornezev, uh, they were unable to take it by storm. For their south, however, a rapid advance along the railway brought the fall of uh, Kontemirokov, oh south of Ros Ro uh, Rosh, and of Leshenk, 100 miles southwest of Kontemirokov. On July 12th, the heavy fighting was in progress near Baguchar, which, together with Milorosov, I don't know, the Russians were obliged to evacuate on the 15th. This created a dangerous bulge in the Russian lines, which threatened the industrial city of Stalingrad on the Volga and the port of Rostov at the mouth of the Don. The Russian armies inside the Don Bend, fought fierce rearguard actions 
whilst retiring to their main defensive positions along the lower reaches of the river. But by the 16th was taking place before Voroshilov, oh boy, Voroshilovgrad. And two days later, the enemy was only 70 miles northwest of Rostov and still advancing rapidly. On the following day, yeah, on the following day, uh, Voroshilovgrad was evacuated by the Red Army in order to avoid encirclement. The pictures show left Russian sappers on the Voroshnev sector crawling forward to clear a gap in the minefield for the passage of their tanks and infantry. You can see them doing their best to clear any of that away. And then on the right here, Soviet infantry equipped with automatic weapons. And we can see them holding this position. We got the good old dinner plate, the papusha. Action in the Western Desert as British advance. July 1942. Charging under fire. Indian troops charge through gaps in barbed wire. It's right here. Uh, yeah. Charge through gaps in barbed wire. Made with the aid of Bren gun carriers as they advance to capture a stronghold in the desert. While below, men of an English regiment man their Vicar guns in forward position as an enemy artillery shot finds range close by. Men of all nations owing allegiance to the British Commonwealth played a part in the great campaign of the 8th Army to oust the Axis from North Africa and eliminate the threat to Egypt, in which they wrote a glorious page in the annals of history during the dark days of the war for the United Nations. I'm glad they bring that up. You know, a lot of the times now, we don't really talk about all of them. There are people that do, but people forget the massive British Empire. A lot of the times, there was troops from all over. And this is one of the reasons why this is a world war. Mostly because of the British Empire. In both world wars, it's mostly because of the British Empire. Not to say that there weren't other reasons, but the British Empire plays a huge part in why Britain doesn't just lose. Um, it supplies men, supplies, everything, which allows them to keep their positions that they may have otherwise lost if it was only Britain by itself. Campaigning on two fronts, July 1942. Success in New Guinea. During the long campaign of Papua New Guinea, the Australian troops played a part of conspicuous gallantry. Here, three Aussies are seen in action in the jungle. You can see they're moving forward in the jungle through the jungle. That guy's like, man, it is too hot out here. But yeah, the Aussies play a huge part in both the African theater and the Pacific theater. Like they just said with Papua New Guinea. Advance in the desert. Many daring and successful actions were fought by the British troops during the fighting in the Libyan desert. The pictures show British infantry charging through a smokescreen. Something I always think is interesting about how they march, if you notice a lot of times, they always, a lot of times, look at this, put the heel down first. This guy might put heel down first, might be toe first, but yeah, a lot of these guys are like stomping through the, whenever they're marching, which is just like, I can't feel good, but also I don't really know if that's proper etiquette or whatever. But they do a good job, and that's what matters, really. British hold the initiative in Egypt. July 21st to 27th, 1942. German counterattacks repelled. On July 16th, German forces attempt to recapture the positions they had lost on the Ruist Ridge, and a big tank battle developed in which 25 enemy tanks were destroyed. In the north, where the enemy counterattacked and regained part of the ground lost at Tel El Issa, 
Imperial forces drove the enemy out of most of the lost positions. On the 21st, General Archleck launched a general offensive along all along the front, and a fierce fighting raged throughout the night and the following day. In addition, South African troops drove the enemy from the whole of Tel El Isa Ridge, while in the center, New Zealand infantry made considerable progress along Ruist Ridge. By the 25th, the fighting had died down and the enemy began to dig in. The pictures show above, um, right here, Axis prisoners taken by the New Zealanders at, on Ruist Ridge. And we can see there's the New Zealanders watching those men, just going, okay, you guys stay there. Below, uh, loading up a General Grant tank ready for action. Yeah, that's a tank we don't really talk about very much, is the Grant tank. We have we talk about the Shermans quite a bit, but the predecessor is the Grant here. Um, it's an alright tank. Not the best. Not the worst, though. It's just alright. The main problem with it is this gun. So they have the gun up top. Not very effective. But this gun, really effective. Problem is, if you can see, it's just wrenched onto the side, so it can't really aim very good. It's a powerful gun, it just doesn't aim very good. And then this gun doesn't really have the firepower to fight other tanks very well. So, it kind of has good ideas, but just doesn't get used very effectively, and those ideas aren't implemented effectively. Uh, and then the maps show above a German German advance indicated by the black arrows here. So we see right here, German advances right on the edge there. And they're right here. Egypt is, they're in Egypt almost. They're on this border right here. Let's see if I can. Allied line. So this is the allied line here. And then... Below, this is the main battle area. And we can see here the counterattacks by the Allies here. And yeah, the uh, Allies do a good job. Um, yeah, they get pushed all the way back. After they push the enemy all the way, and then they pushed all the way back, and it's just a back and forth for a while. The next big counterattack, I believe, is the end, though. And it's just uh, the enemy will not push back this far again. But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. I always appreciate your feedback. Uh, and as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.